worship today. <clears throat> Excuse me, I got a frog in my throat. <clears throat> Springs here and the frogs came out. We're so glad to see you. Are you ready to lift up our Lord Jesus today? He is in this house. If you need strength today, God is here. If you need encouragement today, God is here. If you need joy, if you need strength, if you need healing, he's here. If you've ever been touched by the Lord Jesus, lift your hand. If he's ever brought you peace, lift your hand. Come on, lift your hand in this house. Yeah. And if you've ever experienced the love of God, lift your hand and let somebody know today. Yeah, amen. All right, here we go.
Anybody remember that? We used to, yes, Lord. I'm singing. Some of y'all were still doing it. We're singing yes to the Lord. There is no other person that you can say yes to and know that your trust is completely in the right place than with the Lord Jesus. We're going to sing again today. Come, now is the time to worship. God, the scripture says that the Father is looking for those who are going to worship him in spirit and in truth. And I don't, I, I read that scripture for years and I thought that that verse meant um, that we would worship him in the spirit, but also in the truth of God's word, like the, like a doctrinal truth is what I really thought. And then I read it in a different version a few years ago and it said, worship God honestly that just changed my whole, my whole mindset. And I want you to know that as that song said, you can come to the Lord. God is not waiting for you to be perfect before you come to him. He's not waiting for you to have it all together before you come to him to worship. He says, come as you are. There's a song that we might sing later. It says, oh, come to the altar. And you just want, he wants you to come honestly. Come before him. Bring your brokenness to the Lord today. Worship before him. And let him do that work in your heart today in the name of Jesus. You were. 
sitting there and I was thinking about what I wanted to say to you this morning to start this off and I remember a time when I was sitting in my it was very young very early in my ministry and I was sitting in the office of my pastor and we were just talking and I just began to cry and I, I mean it was an ugly cry I don't think I do another type but I was just sobbing and he's like just tell me what's on your heart and I was like I just want to stop losing I want to win. I was like, Pastor, I just want to win. 
one day in my life, I just want to win. And he just said, you're winning. Doesn't seem like you're winning. That's Christian life. It doesn't always seem like you're winning, but you are winning. If you've accepted Christ as your personal Savior, I just want you to raise your hand right now. I'm not, I'm not trying to call out anybody. I just want you to raise your, na- your hand because I want to read you a promise right now from the Word of God. Isaiah 41 and 10 says this, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will up low, uphold you with my righteous hand. That's God's promise to you promise to his people and I'm telling you right now I've lived long enough to tell you that it's true it might not feel like you're winning right now you're taking punches to the face and when you get to the corner your corner man is saying to you jab and move jab and move but I'm telling you right now that God has not left you he knows where you are his plan is to bring you out There is no way that he's going to let you stay in the trouble you're in because his name is on it. His name is so beautiful. His name is so awesome. He does all that he does for his name's sake. Hallelujah. You should be encouraged this morning. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord so excited. And I just want you to know if you haven't accepted him, you haven't accepted that name yet, And like our pastor's wife just said, Sister Jen just said, if you haven't worshiped truthfully, it's not just saying, I'm going to come, Lord. It's like truthfully living it. And you want to do that today? You can. He is listening. And he wants you to come worse than you want to come to him. He is ready for you. Hey, everybody, I got some announcements for you today. We're so glad to have you in this place. So glad to have everyone online with us. We miss you. Uh, Hope to embrace you at some point. Everybody say, get the 411. Ooh, no, 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 no. We do this the right way. Get the 411. Yeah. We want to stay connected with you. Visit familychurch.net and scroll to the bottom of the page to subscribe to receive email and text message updates. You can also share a prayer request or a praise report. You can sign up for text updates by sending text me to 313131. Again, that's text me to 313131. The 2021 calendar is filling up quickly. Visit familychurch.net slash calendar to see important upcoming dates. Amen. So if you don't know what's going on, you're like, when's that Mexican Monday? When's that kayak group? Go out there and look at the calendars. You'll be able to see those things. Hey, how about this? Are you guys excited for Resurrection Sunday? (laughs) Easter Sunday is just two weeks away. It's going to be a very special day here at Family Church as we celebrate uh, life from death to life. Amen. If you uh, know someone who needs to begin their life, invite them to join you. Weather permitting, we will be setting up a a hospitality tent outside with donuts and coffee and other continental breakfast breakfast favorites. Our Easter egg hunt will immediately follow the service. Uh, We would uh, love for you and every family here to uh, go out to Walmart, and they got this aisle where, like, all the Easter festivities are. You know the one I'm talking about. Your kids run right there. If you don't know, just let your kid lose. They'll go. Just follow them because they're going to go right there. And in there, in that aisle, there's these eggs, the plastic eggs, and they're already filled with candy. So if you would uh, donate some of those so that we can, so that the kids, when they go and do their egg hunt, they can have a great time and a lot of variety to pick some eggs. Amen. Can we do that? Come on now, I think we could do that. Hey, how many of you are in a small group? Raise your hand. All right, how many of you are not in a small group yet, but you're thinking about it? Okay, if that's you, then I got the I got great small groups. I got small groups from outdoors and small groups to just eating food. It's that simple. We eat the we eat food and we say, Lord, thank you for the taco. It's that simple. 
and we fellowship and we care about one another. We keep in touch with each other. And that's really what small groups are about. It's not about getting you in a weird place. It's just saying, hey, come and spend time with us. We want, we care about you. We want to make sure that we're sharing life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Another thing about small groups, come on, is that small groups help you take that next step in your walk with God. Amen. No matter what season of life you're in, if you're in a small group doing life with people, doing life with Christians, they're encouraging you to grow in your walk with God. Amen. That's what I want everyone doing. Amen. If you're watching online this morning, hey, we want you to be a part of what's going on here. You are a part. Amen. What God is doing here at Family Church. Amen. Brother Terrence, thank you so much. Man, the Spirit of God is here today. Amen. We're singing, we're worshiping, we're praising God, amen, and I'm just encouraged, and I pray that every single one of you here today are watching online right now, that you will be encouraged, amen, by the conclusion of this service today, amen. The thing about it is, when we say amen, we go home and go about our day, God is not done. God wants to, to continue what he starts right here in your heart and your life right now. Look at your neighbor and say, God's not done. Look at your second choice and say, hey, he's just getting started. Amen, amen. God bless you. Amen. Hey, a lot of great things coming up. Can't wait for Easter. Everybody hold up two fingers. Two fingers. Come on, two fingers. Hold up two fingers. Come on. If you're watching online, hold up two fingers or type in the number two. Amen. What, what I want to do is help you remember Invite two people to either watch with you online, invite them over, or bring two people with you to service. Amen. We want to encourage people to be a part of what God is doing right now. Amen. We'll give you an opportunity to give this morning. If you're, if you're online watching today, we want to invite you to give with us today. There's a couple different ways that you can give. You can go online to familychurch.net, click on the Give button. You can give there as well. Amen. Or you can text your offering amen, to 84321, or you could just drop it in the mail, bill pay, amen, and they could send it here to the church at 1586 Dweller Road in Lake St. Louis, Missouri, amen. So I just want to say a big thank you. Thank you for giving. Thank you for giving the tithe and offering, amen. Because you give, the family church could to continue to reach and shine bright, amen, in our community, amen. And would you bow your heads and let's just give thanks and pray today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the, another opportunity to worship and giving here this morning, God. We worship you. We give our tithe and our offering, God, so under the kingdom of God, Lord. Let it be used to reach souls. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Can you say amen? God bless you as you give unto the Lord this morning.
Clap your hands into the Lord. Yeah, come on. Amen, amen. Uh, high school and middle school, please remain in, the, in with us today. But our preschool and kids' church, God bless you. You may be dismissed in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Don't you love this sunny spring day? Man, isn't it awesome out? Amen. If you, hey, if it's your first time watching online today, type in praise the Lord. It's good to see you. Amen. If you're, it's your first time in the service here today at Family Church, we welcome you. Amen. We're so glad that you're here. Amen. Amen. If you've not received your guests back, stop by the guest services. Amen. And they'll let you know. We'll, they'll, they'll have a special gift for you this morning. Amen. Uh, hey, it's Easter season, uh, and it's a wonderful time today and to be a part of what God is doing. Amen. And we're talking, the next couple of lessons, we're going to be talking about uh, Easter, uh, the Passion Week, the things going on here today, and, and just believing God for great things to happen, amen, in our lives. And so, uh, but there's so many things that happen the week of Easter, the, the Passion Week. And, and so we're, I just want to take a couple examples of the things that happened during the week, because a lot happened, the Garden of Gethsemane, the, the Last Supper, um, the, the, the disciples hearing the, the, the rooster crow out in the middle of the night, deception, the, the beating, the crucifixion, Golgotha, and we, a lot of things happened here. So through all of that, I was like, what, what are just a couple things that I could just grab and go and talk about that would really make a difference in my life that maybe I've never talked about before? Amen. So this morning, I want to talk about a couple things here today, and just and just kind of we just kind of walk right through it and see because it really made a huge difference in my life. Uh, talking about what we're going to talk about this morning. Amen. So um, can you say amen? amen? Amen. If you've got your Bibles this morning, I want to invite you to turn with me to here we go, Matthew chapter twenty. Amen. There we go, Matthew. There we go. Now Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, took the 12 disciples aside on the road and said to them, verse 18, Behold, we're going to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be, will be betrayed to the chief priest and to the scribes, and they will, be con they will condemn him to death and deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and scourge and to crucify. And the third day he will rise again. Amen. So you're seeing the setting here of the Passion Week of Jesus getting ready just to get into full motion here. Amen. And here at the, it's like Jesus is getting together his disciples here this, these last few days and a few hours, and he's wanted to get together with them. I think he's really wanting to spend some time with them because uh, great things are getting ready to happen after he's gone. Jesus is well aware what was going to be happening to him. He knew Judas would betray him and all the horrible, unique events that would take place. And I think that kind of the chaos and things, the disciples are maybe getting uneasy, maybe a little pride flaring up from now and then, jealousy flaring up from now and then. And, you know, the disciples were almost like a place that, you know, they're kind of, um, one theologian says, maybe the disciples were getting a little jealous of one another, you know, fighting and bickering like kids on a vacation. You ever take a vacation with your kids? Long vacation? Yeah, it's like you need a vacation from the vacation, right? And, you know, the disciples were kind of getting almost to the point, you know, some guys were saying that maybe they're just a little distracted and things are just getting a little whack. They're kind of losing their focus a little bit. But on this last night, uh, Jesus kind of does something different and unique. Uh, the final moments before he goes to the garden, before he's arrested, uh, before Jesus, think about this, Jesus is now getting ready to hand over his pulpit to these 12 men. He's saying he's going to give them the gospel. He's turning the reins over to them, so uh, he's... he's to build the church, to be ambassadors, to be the hands and feet of the Lord. You know, Jesus said the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Or, well, maybe Jesus is kind of worried. Well, can these 12 disciples, can they stick with it? Can they keep moving forward? So, so look at this. We're going to read one more passage here. John 13, 1 through 8. 
Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, that he should depart from this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And the supper being ended, the devil had already put into the heart of Judas, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, that he had come from God, he was going to God, rose from the supper, laid aside his garments, and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel which he was girded. Then came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? Jesus said to him, what I'm doing you do not understand now, but you will know after this. Peter said to him, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, if, you, if I do not wash you, you will not have no part with me. He said, Lord, bless your word. And you say, awkward. That was an awkward moment for the disciples, especially Peter, because we have his recorded conversation, what was happening. Peter was thinking, this is so wrong. This is not going to happen. I don't think so, Jesus. Nope, I don't think so. If anyone should not be washing feet, it should not be Jesus, not you, Lord. G Peter said, you are not washing my feet. What well, Jesus said, Peter, if you don't allow me to wash your feet, you will have no part of what I got planned in your life. Well, then Peter's like, you know what, Lord? I, need, I don't need my feet just washed. I need my inside. My, I, need, I, need, I need every part of me washed in my life. Amen. I need all of me washed. Oh, we're not done yet. Come on, it gets better. Verse 12. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you not understand what I've done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Jesus was trying to, to have a teachable moment. On the last meal, the last supper, the last really gathering that they would have together on this fashion. And I don't really think Jesus was wanting to have the, a, a, a servant lesson on how to wash feet. Not how to bathe someone else's feet, okay? I think Jesus was wanting them to have a spirit and an attitude that they would be willing to wash someone else's feet. Willing to kneel down. Willing to have a moment where you're willing to serve your brother or your sister in Christ with a willing attitude and with humility, without question. I think he was wanting to have a foot-washing spirit had the spirit in the heart of a true servant that is willing to serve no matter how high or how low the task may seem to one another. Amen? I think that's good. A foot-washing spirit, an attitude to serve. Jesus said in verse 16, Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Amen. I think Jesus wants a little action to follow our words. Amen. You just can't be the know-it-all guy all the time, right? The answer guy, the one that always runs their mouth, right? You know that person, right? They always have an answer. They always got something to say. Talk, talk, talk. 
you always can't be the great genie idea person, okay? The Monday morning quarterback, okay? You, but what Jesus is saying here, you got to have action. you got to put your action with words. It's another thing to just know it and know what to say, but it's another thing to know it but then serve it, to do it, to see the need, just not point out the need, but take care of the need, all right? So this is the last night. Things are going to really radically change for the disciples. Jesus is like, this is your topic. This is your lesson. It's a lesson on servanthood. Jesus knows that, that, that I'm getting ready to wash my disciples' feet. We're going to go to the garden and pray. I'm going to get arrested, and things are going to get crazy. And the feet that I've just washed in this upper room are going to scatter like wildfires, scatter like roaches when you turn the light on, you know. They're going to run. They're going to betray. They're going to lie. Poof, they're gone. But there's a couple things that I want to point out to you this morning that what things that Jesus did. So here we go. Jesus got up from the supper. They were in the middle of, of dinner. And they're eating their food, and they're, uh, and they're just having a wonderful meal. In the, in the middle of the meal, he allows himself to be interrupted. Many times... Uh, when we have an issue come up and, and, and happen, and we don't like to be bothered, do we? Especially during dinner time. Especially if you just, uh, you know, cooked a nice steak, got a baked potato there with it, you know, a side of asparagus or broccoli. You're like, it can wait. Whatever it is, it can wait. But Jesus allowed himself to be bothered, interrupted. And, and many times we don't, we, we, we don't say, you know, I don't want to be bothered. I got my assignment. I'm good. So, or uh, people have that attitude. They will take care of it. Or someone else can deal with it. But you know, and like I know, uh, so many wonderful things happen when you're divinely interrupted. Has that ever happened to you that you were interrupted and something amazing happened in the middle that, that, that you were bothered, but you responded, and you know, and so many wonderful opportunities have happened out of nowhere. You're just divinely, the conversations happen because you stopped and you listened and you looked and got involved. And sometimes great miracles happen, amen, physical or just wonderful things come together and you think, wow, I did not see that coming. So thank God for divine interruptions. Jesus got up during the meal and he began to walk to this situation. He laid aside his garment. He put aside some few things before he picked up the, the basin. And sometimes though, it, what, that's what you and I need to do. We need to declutter our life before we can pick up the basin, before we can pick up the towel and, and get to work with what God has us to do. And so look at your life this morning. What can you declutter from your life? Because sometimes if your life is full of stuff, you, can't, uh, you have to set something down before you can pick up what God has for you. Look at what matters in your life. This life. When you begin to really examine your life and see what really truly matters in eternity in my life. What are my eternal goals this morning? What are your eternal goals today? What matters? James says, life is but a vapor. You see it for a little while, and then it goes so fast. Before you can pick up the uniform of a, of a servant, you got to have to lay down some things of this life. Think about it. Look what the disciples have been doing over the last few years with Jesus, following Jesus. They've been going to weddings and banquets and special dinners they knew that when you walk in a room from outside, that there would be a servant somewhere posted by the entrance of the building. They would have a basin with water and a towel, and they would kneel down, and they would begin to clean all the guests that were entering into the house, the muck, the travel, the grime, the donkey and the camel poop off their feet the filth of the day, and so it wouldn't be tracked into the house. 
because back then some of the tables were sitting pretty low. So when you sat down to eat dinner, you were sitting and staring at Bob's big toe, you know. It was right there. And you don't want to sit next to somebody that's got stinky feet, you know. I mean, come on. So when the disciples were going inside for that meal, uh, there was no servant by the door because this was a small, intimate setting. It wasn't a big banquet, but it was just the disciples and a few of them together. And it was kind of a small type family meal. And the disciples, as they entered the building, they, they saw the basin somewhere by the front entrance. Maybe they saw the towel there. And one by one, they just kind of walked on by. knowing that there was no servant to clean the feet. Maybe they were thinking, somebody dropped the ball. They didn't hire the servant. Well, it's not my job. I got to get inside. Everyone's behind me. They're pushing me in. No, you know, somebody else will do it. Somebody else will pick up the base and a towel. They'll take care of it. We'll let Thomas do it. He's always complaining about stuff, you know, or Peter, he's the hothead. It's his turn, you know. Uh, you know, maybe somebody with the lower rank or not as important as me will take care of this situation to wash the feet. Let me tell you something. Uh, when, you, when the basin is beneath you, when the cloth in the basement, you'll miss out on opportunities with God. If you think that is above me, it's for somebody else, uh, you'll miss out on what God has in store. I mean, how many stories can we think about that you were going down the road like the, like the Levi, the priest, and they missed the guy in the ditch on the side of the road. They missed an opportunity to love on somebody, help somebody back to help. But there's that Samaritan that everybody hates in town. He stops and blesses the traveler that had got beat up and stolen from. You know, if you read the, you remember the old story of this uh, very formal church was going on and a very stately church, an old church in town, and, and this, this young teenager walks in the back door, doesn't have any shoes on, got a t-shirt on, worn jeans on. What is it? He comes up to the very f front of the building while church is going on, and he doesn't realize that there's pews he's supposed to sit on, right? He sits down in front of the, the, the minister giving their sermon, and he sits there while everything is going on, and everybody's kind of like, what do you do? What do, we do? He's not disruptive. He just sat down. And a quick-thinking gentleman of the church got up from where he was sitting, walked down to the front, sat down right by the student, and proceeded to take his shoes and socks off and sit right next to him to make him feel welcome and thankful that he was there. It was a life-changing moment. There's life-changing moments that happen in your life every single day. Come out here on Friday night, you'll see some adults playing basketball, sitting down talking to students and having a blast, but kind of getting down with them. Walk back there as your students are in their class this morning. You'll see teachers doing crazy things with the students, having fun, playing games, and having a ball, getting down on their level to share Christ. Don't let opportunities pass you, pass on by. Opportunities you think that is insignificant could be absolutely Radically changing for that person in your person's life. It's like sometimes, dads, we got to stop and push back from the workbench and go outside and ride the bike with the kids. Sometimes you got to stop and throw the baseball with the kids or help them learn to tie their shoes. Something that can absolutely change their life. Scripture says that he took a towel. Very simple, what Jesus was doing. Jesus wasn't, wasn't giving out titles that day. He wasn't giving out captain, lieutenant, corporal, sergeant to the disciples. He was giving out towels that day. While people sometimes are seeking positions and titles, power, fame, or prestige, Jesus says, what I want to do, I want to give you a towel. I want to give you a towel wash feet. 
the blessing is just not having a towel. But the blessing is, is knowing how to serve with the towel. Knowing how to wash feet. Learning how to wash feet. It's not about the towel. It's about what the towel can do for you and someone else. It's putting it to work. It's getting to work. It's taking the initiative. It's seeing an opportunity, seeing a need, and fill it. You know, one pastor says, I love paper towels. I love paper towels too. We buy them by the bulk at our house. I don't think we ever leave Costco or Sam's or Walmart or Target without a thing of you know, paper towels. They said, man, a, a roll of paper towels are like amazing small group. They're all together, rolled up together, ready to get to work and do something amazing. But paper towels were created for a specific purpose. Why? For a mess. You seen that commercial? I don't, I, I don't know what, what type of what paper towel commercial it is, but it, well, bounce, bouncy, you, bouncy, bounce, bounce. Is it bounce paper towels? It, it, it starts off with this perfectly clean kitchen. Now, come on, seriously, there ain't no clean kitchens. I mean, the cabinets are wide, the floor is wide, there's marble top wide, and this kid, she is decked out, not a spot of dirt on this kid. And all of a sudden, the dad walks in the room and he spills his coffee or something. And it's headed toward her, it's headed toward her computer, and he's like, no, and it's all slow motion, no. And the kid's over there going, no. And the dog's going, yes. And, <laughs> and there's liquid and, you know, pizza rolls rolling all over the place. The dog is waiting for a pizza roll or something, a dumpling. And, and they get the roll of paper towels. And then they wipe it up and the mess is just absorbed that fast. Hey, we were created for messes, guys. We were created for opportunities just like that. God is waiting for you to get your paper towel and get to work. We were created for spills, grease, the spills of humanity. That's what we are. We're born to do. We were born to get involved, not to put it off on somebody else. Jesus stooped down. He stooped down to, to get down to their level so he could raise them up into high places. And Scripture is just a, just a Hours later, there's, it talks about of another basin. It was a place where Pilate had come out. He's standing before the Pharisees, all the people there gathered together, and they were shouting, give us Barabbas. Keep Jesus, crucify Jesus. We want Barabbas. Put the Messiah, the Christ as we call him, to to death, crucify him. And Pilate says, bring me a basin of water. He washed his hands, dried his hands, and says, guys, I'm done. I'm not a part of this. I make notices, and he's, I, I wash my hands of this in that basin he did. He said, I'm innocent of this man's blood. It's on you. It's your responsibility. And that's where a lot of people are at this morning. There's two basins to choose from today. The basin of serving, where it's the basin of, you know what? I'm not making a decision. I'm, I'm avoiding this circumstance. Well, we all know just because Pilate didn't make a decision, he was really making a decision. He was making a decision not to get involved. And that's where a lot of us are today. Which basin do you want to get a part of in your life? In Revelation 3, John talks about Jesus comes knocking at our door, our door of our life. He's knocking, wanting us to open the door. Why? So he can come in and sit down in your life and be a part of what's going on. This morning, I want you to really look at your life today. If you could close your eyes today and bow your heads. 
Now, if you could make this decision today, are you truly surrendered to the Lord today? Are you at a place in your walk with God? Some of you are at a crossroad this morning. You're really not surrendered. You're hanging on to your ideology. You're hanging on to things that are holding you back from God's Word being the foundation of your life. When God's Word becomes your place in your life, when you're surrendered, you say, Lord, not my will, not my ways, Lord. But I want to implement, I want to stand on your word. And your words are going to become the foundation of my life. What I base my decisions on. What I base, what I base my, my future goals on, my plans on. God, that's what I want. I want, Lord, what you want for my life. Can you lay down your, your wants? Say, God... I lay down what I want, but I want what you have for my life. I want your plan for my life today. The first step, the first thing he has for your life today is for you to experience the mercy and the grace of God today. That's why he went to the cross. That's why he was crucified, so each and every one of us could find forgiveness for our sins and mistakes, to find deliverance for the hang-ups and old habits and old ways of our life today so that all of us that are ready for a change we can have that change in Jesus Christ today let's pray Heavenly Father we just come to you this morning we ask for your forgiveness and your mercy today there are those here this morning that are, are needing to surrender to say Lord not my will but your will be done Lord God, help them make that choice. Help them make that decision to surrender and give their whole heart to you today, Lord. Please don't hold back any halfway. Don't go halfway. Don't just put in a quarter of your heart. I want you to go all in this morning with Christ. You say, Pastor, I don't understand everything that Christ has for me. That's okay. I just want you to be willing to say, Lord, whatever you want, that's what I want today. Amen. If you're watching online this morning, said, Pastor, I'm all in today. If you're all in here in the service today, would you just stand with us today all across this building and say, Pastor, I want to be all in. I'm going all in this morning, Lord. I want to serve with all my heart. In Jesus' name we pray. To Jesus I surrender all to Him I freely give I will ever love and trust
Amen. If that's how you feel this morning in your heart, amen, would you just lift your hands this morning, lift a hand, and close your eyes and say, Lord, God, I'm just giving you all my heart today. Lord, I surrender my heart and my life to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, lead me. Come on, raise your hands high. That's how you feel. Raise one eye. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Go all in with Christ today. Come on. Come on. Go all in. Raise your hands. Come on. That is your next step. Come on. Raise your hands and say, I am Lord. I am all yours today. Lord, I'm all yours today. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. If that's not where you are today, if that's not where you're at today, where you can say, I'm all in with you, God. Amen. I want to pray for you because that's your next step with Christ. Amen. Amen. God wants to settle some things in your heart and your life. Amen. So you can say, I am all in with you, Lord. Maybe it's getting into the Word of God. Amen. Maybe it's comparing things. The world says this is okay, but God's Word says this. Amen. Or maybe you're ready to take that next step and say, Pastor, I want to be baptized. Amen. I want to be baptized. Or some of you have seen a pastor, I want to be rebaptized because, man, I have walked away, lived a crazy, crazy life, Lord. And I'm just, man, I'm ready to declare to everybody, I am ready to go all in with Christ. I have a radical change in my life. Amen. Because you're at a place. All of us that are placed today, that you're making a decision today. You make one or you don't make one, but you're making one. Because Christ says, take that next step. Amen. That's a decision you want to make. God, I want to grow in you today. Even if it's just a baby step. What can you do to grow in your walk with God today? What can you do? What can you do? What could you do? What, what, what could we do? Amen. Picking up a towel, said, Lord, I, I'm ready to serve. I got my towel, got my basin. Whatever you have planned for me, Lord, that's what I want to do. Amen. Amen. There's no job too small in the kingdom of God. Amen. For me to do. Oh, years ago, that oh, you feel called to preach? Well, here's a scrubber for the bathroom, Pastor. Oh, you want to pastor a church? You want to be a preacher? Hey, let's go clean bathrooms. Clean a bathroom. What's that got to do about saving people? <laughs> Amen. But it's more about having a spirit, a servant's heart. And says, so, you know what? I'll help out and do whatever. And just so you know, I've cleaned these bathrooms here many a times. Amen. Would you find somebody close to you that you feel comfortable praying with? Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your mercy and your grace today, Lord. God, wherever they're at today, watching online or here with us in this service today, Whatever that next step for in them today is, Lord, let them have the confidence and the faith, Lord, to take it. Being it, starting reading your word, having a daily prayer life, coming to church on a regular basis, finding a place to join the dream team and serve here at the church, giving to a food pantry, loving on somebody making a phone call and encouraging them, sending a text message or an email, God, whatever that is, Lord, help us take that next step, God, and growing in you, Lord, being confident that we could do all things through Christ who gives us the strength, who gives us the ability to serve and to make a difference, God. In the wonderful name of Jesus, I pray that for all these young men on the front row, God, I just pray over them, Lord, that they have the confidence and the trust in the Lord to continue to put you first in their life, that you will lead them and guide them, that a good man's steps 
are ordered of the Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. I pray for those watching online this morning, dear God. God, I pray that you bless them and encourage them where they're at today, God. God, you see the needs and struggles that they have in their life, God. The rest is sure that we can trust you and believe in you today, Lord, that you're going to work things in their life out, God. God, we pray for those that are here in the service that are sick. God, we pray for those, God, that need healing and strength today, God, that you'll be with them, dear God, that you're going to be their healer, dear God. I pray in the name of Jesus. You'll be with them at the hospital, God. You'll be with them at their home, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, today. God, help us all have a surrendered heart this morning, God, a servant's heart, a heart that is willing to take a towel and a basin and to see a need and fill it. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Amen. Can you say amen? Amen. The Lord's handing out towels this morning. Pick yours up before you go. Take it with you wherever you go. And say, Lord, I'm a willing heart. I'm willing to serve in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Love you guys online this morning. Type in a praise the Lord. I love you guys here this morning. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next week in Jesus' name. Praise God.